three, two, one. Oh my god! <laughs> Here we have the finished AK-50 front trunnion, which is really, really nice. I'm glad that I had Titans do this one because this is the part that's going to make sure that I don't explode. Super, super beefy design. These threads look fantastic. <laughs> So today we're getting started on our AK-50 project. We're gonna be starting with our front trunnion and this thing's made out of A2 annealed steel. Now this stuff is pretty soft, but we're gonna rough the outside profile and then drill a through hole, flip the part over and put a dovetail on it so that we can take it over to our DVF 5000 and Jesse can finish out the part. So let's make some chips. Right, let's get this thing dovetailed. Alright, so we got our first two operations complete. We're ready to get this thing over to Jesse. Now, as you can see, this is a prismatic part, but we do need to machine on all six sides. Now, this is where a five axis truly shines because we can do this in less operations. Now we're gonna start by holding on this dovetail that Barry created on the first operation and rough everything that we can reach before we start finishing. Now I like to do all the roughing operations before any finishing because you run the risk of the part moving if you don't. When we finish this operation, it's gonna look something like this. Now, as you can see, I've got a lot of excess stock left here at the bottom. And I wanna be careful not to cut that away because that is what's keeping our part rigid. When you have a part like this that has multiple operations across multiple machines, it's important to think ahead and not back yourself into a corner. Take this tapered dovetail, for instance. Now we're gonna leave 50 thousandths on this floor right here because we're gonna wire EDM this entire profile. But we're not gonna just rough it down to 50 thousandths. We're actually gonna take a finish pass and make that surface nice and smooth. That's because I know that Trevor's not gonna have any other way to touch his work offset other than that face. So by taking a tool with a calibrated tool link, and finishing a face to a known location, Trevor's gonna have a valid face to touch his work offset to. When we start our finishing operations, we're actually not gonna finish the top face first. And you've seen me do this before. We're actually going to finish the sides of the part with the same tool first. And after we finish both sides, we're gonna make the machine stop and measure that thickness. Now, whatever we deviate from the programmed thickness, then we're gonna adjust our tool length to that before we finish that top face. That's gonna ensure that the tool cuts exactly where we told it to cut. Now, why is that important? Well, we know that the dust cover mounts on the top of this part with the tapered dovetail. And even if our dovetails are cut perfectly on both parts, then if I overcut or undercut this face, 
then they're not gonna sit flush. Trevor's gonna finish this helical feature on the sinker EDM, so we need to leave this internal diameter small so we don't have any blending issues. So now the part's finished, we're gonna get everything checked and get it over to Trevor on the EDM. The EDM work on this stuff was not simple. Not a lot of shops really wanted to do that, but I'm glad you guys were up to the challenge. It was super neat. Because these back of these lugs are helical, that is a, that is a unique challenge, I'm sure, but it, looked, it looks fantastic. Oh man, we're about to take some crazy cuts, but before we do, I just wanna say real quick, these inserts are $6 a piece, that's right. Canamato is basically giving them away because they wanna get them into your hands because once you use them, you're gonna know these are the best inserts on the planet. They're gonna increase your productivity, your efficiency, and all of it. $6 a piece on our store. And if you haven't gone on our store, make sure you check out the prices, look at the different inserts. On average, we're about 40% less expensive than all other distributors, so check it out. Boom. Let's talk EDM. So first, we laid it down and we actually cut this step off of the part and that actually removed the stock that Jesse held onto on the DVF 5000. After that, we stood up our trunnion and then we cut this tapered feature at the bottom of our part. Now to program that, we used Mastercam and we used a true four axis program to cut this on our wire. But what does that mean? What that means is, the upper and lower head of our wire actually move independently from one another to cut the taper on our part. And this can actually provide a little bit of a challenge because it's gonna be difficult to flush all the EDM swarf from our cut and it makes it harder to hold really precise tolerances. Now this has to be very precise because it actually mates with our dust cover which also has a taper cut into it and for this part, as it slides onto our trunnion, they wanted it to be perfectly flush on the top and on the bottom. So everything had to be absolutely perfect. As you can see, it locked up really nice. If we flip it over, this isn't sliding off or anything. Everything locks up good, and we even have a really nice match right here between our two radiuses. We didn't cut those together. We cut them separately, and you can't even feel a step right there. So after we were finished cutting our taper, we moved over to the Sinker EDM to set up for our first burn. I just want to take a second to say thank you to Integris for providing all the POCO EDM3 graphite, and thank you to Graphel for machining the electrodes to make this part. You guys did a fantastic job. So for our first burn, we stood our trunnion up and we came in with our first electrode that burned our helical faces. Now this might look like a difficult burn, but since the helix is actually machined into our electrode, it was very simple for me. All I had to do was come over to the center of our bore and burn straight down and then orb out in a circular pattern. The only thing that I needed to make sure didn't happen is that I burn into the minor diameter of these threads, which could have ruined our threads completely and scrapped the entire part. For our second burn, we came in and we did our undercuts. Now, these could be machined, but some of these undercuts are actually quite a ways down into our pocket, and one of the benefits of EDM is it actually doesn't leave any burrs, so we can burn this undercut. We're not gonna leave any burrs on the thread that's already been cut onto our part. The only real difference about programming this burn is instead of burning in the Z direction, we actually drop down into our hole, and then we burn in the Y positive direction. After that, burned in the Y negative direction. To finish off our part, we flipped over our trunnion and stood it up in the vise, and then we burned this triangular pocket that the bolt's gonna go through and ride on those helical faces that we burned in the first operation. Again, this feature probably could be milled on this part, but we have some very small fillets down in these corners that go very deep from this top surface. So we found it easiest to burn this feature to give the best quality product and the least amount of headache. Overall, I'm very happy with how the trunnion came out. This is an excellent example of having the right equipment and working together as a team to produce incredible parts just like this. So this is how we are going to headspace the gun, just threading the barrel in until it is nice and tight on the bolt, which also, again, has the helical lockup, just like an AK. So the bolt is really screwing itself into battery. So if you see, these are not flat. It's a helix, and that is matched on the inside here, on the inside, uh, the backside of these lugs inside the front trunnion. So, 
when we put this in, it will rotate into battery. And you can see the bolt getting sucked in. Now the real test too, this dust cover locking piece. It's a little bit of a taper here. It's nice and loose in the beginning, so it's easy to find, easy to kind of return to zero here. And that is snug. Absolutely zero play. Look at that. 